this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, won't we? Oh, I think you have a little rain get you, little, little storms of life hit you, but this is the place we've come to thank God for guiding us safely all week long. God has been our shelter from life's storm. We know Ian was something else in Fiona, but the Lord has been protecting us from life storm. And we are delighted to be in this place. We, we welcome you, those who are watching us virtually and those who are in person. This is the Lord's day and we're glad about it. Let us, let us pray, God. We thank you for the opportunity to assemble in this holy place. We ask that you'd move mightily and give us all that we need that we might worship you clearly with focus, uninterrupted and undistracted, that to the end that someone might be saved and that all of your children will be edified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're delighted to celebrate today the month of October and those who are celebrating October special milestones, particularly those of you who came into the world in October. Anybody celebrating an October birthday, stand up. Keep standing, keep standing, all right, all right. Anybody, anybody have a milestone anniversary? You been, keep standing, a milestone anniversary this month? All right. Well, keep standing, keep standing, milestone anniversary, whatever the anniversary is, this is, this is your month. And we are so delighted to celebrate in uh, our church family, Deacon Pope, Minister Seward, Sister First Lady Lucretia, Muriel, Harvey, Turner, Ashley, uh, Minister Lay, James Roosevelt, Jimmy, Tracy, Rosemary, Annette, Herb, and Della, 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 and especially you, who are celebrating a birthday in the month of October. Let's serenade the maestro. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, 16th chapter of Matthew, verses 13 through 20. As you're locating it, Brother Hernan, I'm going to ask you to come around this way over to be on my, on my left, on my right. Just be there. I'll give you the nod. You know what to do. Just go around that way so you'll be off camera. Amen. I'm a, you can, this is the only time you can walk while I read the scripture. Amen. Don't y'all look at him. Look, at, look this way. Yeah, y'all looking at him, look this way, his wife's with him. She knows, she knows who he got, so you don't have to look at him, check him out. Amen. Our scripture lesson in preparation for today's message, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied to him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Petros, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. The word of God for the people of God. All praise be to God. Here now, 
a voice, a gift for voices of praise, after which a special treat by a dear brother, friend of our congregation, Brother Ralph Herndon. In that order, amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
Church, say amen. 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 Church, say amen again. Let's give God a hand. For his goodness, for his kindness, and for his mercy. I want you to just look at somebody and say, neighbor, it sure is good to see you. Because I realize that it could have been the other way. Who knows it could have been the other way? One sure thing in this life is that storms are going to come. Heartache and trouble are always going to rise. And I'm glad today that we know that everything that comes short in our lives is covered by the blood of Jesus. I got a text while I was getting out of the car from Pastor. This is his song.
from the storm so that the next storm that comes you got an assurance because there will be a next time and guess what if your soul is anchored then it's still anchored today and he will protect you he will guide you somebody knows what he was singing about see you see the choir told us that, that that the Lord has plans for us and just because there's some plans, there, there's some who don't want to see the plan continue. And so when storms come, they come to knock you off your game. But because the one who anchored you and purposed you is secure and steadfast, you're going to withstand the storm. Yeah, I know we haven't done this in a while, but look to somebody that's time. You're going to overcome your storm. Yeah, I'm glad we can overcome the storms of our life. Anybody here glad? that the storm didn't wipe you out. I mean, you're wondering why it is that you're still here, but it was because God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. And if it's any assurance, the storm which was strong in your life wasn't able to knock you off God's plan. You can accomplish it, you can achieve it, you can do it, you can be it. It will come to pass. If the storm did not destroy you, Amen. Y'all didn't come to have church today. Y'all came to look and see. But I want to let you know that the, the power of the storm is nothing compared to the power that is in you. Put your hands together for the power of the Lord one more time. Amen. We thank God for our voices of praise, for leading us in praise to our God, who orders our steps and plans our destiny. And then the Holy Spirit just purposes through storms a clear path, a, a surprise path in worship. And, and the maestro, Brother Ralph Herndon, amen, he blessed us again. Yeah, don't, don't say you didn't get any surprises because men's month is over. There's still some surprises, amen, some divine surprises. And we thank God for, for it. We, and this is, a, this is a special day, unique day, a day we're trying to get through. Uh, we didn't get a chance to do our public goodbyes. He's not necessarily, he's kind of bashful. You would never know that. Uh, but uh, a few days ago, Brother David uh, Harrison shared with me that he's stepping away from uh, his service to our congregation. And so we, he, you know, he doesn't like, he, you, you couldn't tell it, but he's really kind of bashful and so, uh, we didn't get to do the fanfare and all of that, but let's give the Lord a hand of praise for the ministry service he provided. <laughs> so I, I, I've, I've, asked, I've asked Sister Beverly Fitch to come on and stand in the gap in an interim capacity, and, and she's blessing us already with two or three hats. Amen. 
we thank God. We thank God for that. And the Lord always sends by some surprises through through storm. We laid to rest a stalwart member of our church family. But the Lord reminded us, even this morning, that even though the storms will come, if you got the right anchor, uh, you don't have to worry about being adrift and forlorn, because the Lord will guide us. And we praise God for that. I want to draw your attention again to that passage in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus is on the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Uh, if I would, uh, if I were doing uh, an intense study in this passage, you, you've heard that passage, uh, Matthew 16, verse 13. There was some internal rumblings. See, in human positions, there's always the tendency for us to, you know, pull and grab for power. Now, you just read it as a location, Caesarea Philippi. But Caesarea Philippi, see, you had, you had some emperors. You had the emperor Caesar. That's where you get Caesarea. And then you had somebody who followed him. Now, Caesar, you know, was great, but then uh, Philip, he said that to himself, he is greater. And so what he did was uh, he didn't change anything that was Caesar's. You remember Jesus told his disciples when they brought the coin and they were, and some of the, the religious folk were asking, should we give, should we pay taxes? And Jesus said, now, if, if it's Caesar's likeness on the coin, give Caesar what is Caesar and give God what is God's. Well, well, see, Philip must have heard that. So, so what he decided to do was he wasn't going to take what was Caesar's. He was going to just put his, himself above Caesar. And so, he, and so the name here is called Philip's Caesar. Yeah, he put his name above it. Don't think, don't get distracted by all of the political noise. And if you have not registered to vote, go ahead and do it where you are. Get registered to vote, be determined to vote. If you can vote early where you are, get ready to vote early. Vote your conscience, vote your conviction, vote from an informed perspective. Vote because you want to see the Republic thrive and last and be everything that the early framers intended it to be, even though uh, there was some hypocrisy going on even when they were framing it. Amen. But, but, but because there's always been political uh, pulls and tugs. It's right there in scripture. On the coast of Caesarea, Philippi. Uh, yeah, Philip annexed what was Caesar's. He, he didn't take away Caesar's. He just said he imposed himself into that. Now you political students have gotten quiet because you thought I was giving a history lesson. See, people will always figure out how to be the last power in the room. I need you to look over this way. Because when you are uh, in power today, don't, don't fool yourself. Somebody will come along and break your record. That's Roger Mara. Somebody will come along and do what you broke ground to do, but just could not achieve it. Don't ever think that because uh, that after you, that's going to be it. There's always going to be somebody who comes along. Just enjoy the moment while you're in the chair. And, and, and then if you're waiting to get in the chair, just understand it's, a, it's still a hot seat. And they were on the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Uh, they were on the coast of two folk who were concluding and, uh, for power. And Philip says, it's, it's mine. Caesar said it was mine first. And then Philip says, it's mine. And that's where Jesus is. Isn't it strange where Jesus shows up in the place where there's disputes for power and position? Jesus knows how to show. Don't miss that. Jesus has his posse in a place that is disputed for power and authority in a human sense. Yeah, they were going at it. They were, they were demonstrating who was the biggest and the baddest. And that's where Jesus decides to have his little meeting. He has a holy convocation. He has a conference, a convention. He has a meeting. He has a webcast, if you will, a Zoom, if you will, on the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He goes to the place where power upon power is established already. 
already, Caesarea Philippi, and he asks them a question. Oh, the question seems to come out of nowhere. The question doesn't seem to really fit in the locale. And you're saying, well, what does that have to do? That's geography. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with what's going on here. And he asks the question, who do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? They weren't necessarily expecting that, but then maybe they were. Because there are some questions that we get asked that, you know, we've been wanting to say. Ever been in a meeting where folk have been, been wanting to say something? And, and, and you can sense they've been wanting to say it. They just don't know how, so they're not going to really, they, they, they don't want, no, they don't want to show all the hands, so they will, they'll just kind of wait and hope. But then you see the Lord already knows what's happening before they even assemble. And he asks them a question, who do the people say? What are they saying about me? Now, I want you to uh, think through that <coughs> for a moment. I, I don't want you to get caught up in what people say or think about you. Yeah, yeah, he, Jesus is not asking because Jesus needs, you know, the affirmation of the people or of the crowd. He needs the people to, you know, no, he's not asking the question uh, because he, he wants to know how popular he is. Because the truth of the matter is, Jesus already understands then and now that Jesus is not too popular. Oh, he ain't too popular with the folk who don't know him. But then by the looks of things today, he's not really popular among those who say they know him. He asks a question that on the front end should be easy for them to get a gold star. They ought to get 100% on the pop quiz that Jesus gives them, but even they're not resolute on the response because they each pop up with something different. They declare, they say, well, some say you John the Baptist, but he did. Some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, but they did. Who do men say that I am? How are you hanging around, folk? You know me, and how are you letting them say I'm John the Baptist? I grieved at his funeral. How, how, how are you going to let folk leave with the impression that I'm Elijah or Jeremiah and they're no longer with us. Have you ever stopped to imagine that God has placed you in some places to clarify who he is and you coming up with, with all the stuff they saying and you ain't challenging it? It, it, it should have been that they, they would have said, we heard them say, but we corrected them. Ah, and see the world today is saying, well, you know, religion is fine, and you know, spirituality is wonderful, and you can have all that, that's good, that's, that is, it's helpful. The doctor says, you know, having some form of worship uh, help regulates your blood pressure, and it's good for stress, and coming back to places of worship, uh, whatever it is that you do is, is good, uh, but, but, but what is it for you? What has been your experience? And it's a shame that people are leaving the presence of so-called followers of Jesus with the impression that Jesus is dead and done. Yeah, you, you didn't see that in that passage, but they list a lot of dead people and say, well, that's who Jesus is. And if they were in earshot, they could have been in shot where they could have said, uh, no, he's not. And the next time you get to a conversation, you don't have to have no debate with anybody. You don't have to fall out. They ain't got to convert to your way of thinking on that conversation. But all you need to do is tell them in a storm he's sheltered. Oh, the mic must not be working. You need to tell them that when death comes, he reminds us of a hope and he leaves us with an expectation. You ought to tell them that when everybody else turns their back on you, even your father and your mother, he will not forsake you. Yeah, yeah, maybe you have an experience. So let me, let me just tell you, if you're wondering who he is and why the bad things happen to good people, let me tell you, something happened to a good, a good man. He had done no wrong, 
but yet he was found guilty of the most high crimes and misdemeanors of his day and yet he, he who knew no sin became sin for us. You can't, you can't really respond to somebody if you don't know who he is. He says, who do men say that I am in the circles that you've been running in? And I want to challenge us today that you ought to have some people in your circle who don't know Jesus. Because if everybody is as holy as you are, if everybody is as saved as you are, then the church got a long way to go. We need to find some show enough sinners on the outside who don't know who Jesus is from the man on the corner and yet if they encounter you you ought to be able to help them and point them in the right direction yeah you're not telling them you're not telling them who the pundits say he is but you're responding to him based upon your own personal experience because they never encountered John the Baptist they sure, certainly never encountered Jeremiah or Elijah so how in the world can they say this is him and you ain't never met Elijah or Jeremiah they might have met uh, John the Baptist but not everybody because some folk were scared to go out there in the wilderness where he was baptizing and preaching he didn't have an urban street ministry. He had one there out there in the rural community. Ah, but you who know him ought to be able to set the record straight. And if you don't want to get into a long, elongated discussion, all you have to say is that's not who he is because he's living. Oh, you're going to make me work for it. Oh, then Jesus turns around. He says, now, if you've been hanging out with people who have this doubt, then... Who do you say that I am? And they got quiet. You, you know the kind of quiet, the kind of quiet when the question is asked. And it's not because you have more words to say. It's because you don't know what response to give. Who do you say that I am? At least they're honest. They don't know the difference between Jesus and Jeremiah. They, they, they don't know the difference between Jesus and John the Baptist. Maybe they didn't get the paper that morning that listed John the Baptist in the obituary section. But forget them because I'm not spending time with them. Let's not be concerned about what they think because after all, they don't know me like that anyway. Who do you say that I am? And for the last 2000 years, we have been hearing that question posed to us. Who do you say? And I guarantee if we took a poll right now, if you typed in the text, uh, who do you say Jesus is? We would get as many different answers as are represented by bodies watching and participating right now. You wonder, well, is Jesus schizophrenic? Is Jesus all these different people? Mm. Who do you say that I am? He gives them the clue. In fact, he gives them the answer in the question. See, not every test is hard. You just need to have the right teacher. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's why, that's why I, I, I love those, those, those uh, you know, companies that help you take the test and understand the test. And this one right here, they would have been like, now the answer is right there. Because he, he asked, who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Oh, y'all, I'd, I'd have lost you. Y'all got, got, you know, y'all got what you're going to do before the rain comes. Yeah, you remember he was asked the question. He was asked the question when they said, now how is it that you have so much theological insight uh, you, you're not even 50 years old. How is it 
that you gonna expect the children of Israel to just walk out of Pharaoh's clutches? Who, who am I gonna tell them? And, and the answer then was, just tell them I am. Yeah, they, they got mad and they said, we're gonna put Jesus on the hit list now because Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Oh, y'all missed it. He, he, he says in the Gospel of John, I am the true vine. I am the sheep gate. I am the good shepherd. See, they, 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 they were so overwhelmed by the question that they forgot that they had the great I am in front of them. Oh yeah, you missed it too. I'm gonna help you out because who Jesus is is who you needed Jesus to be in the moment of your experience with Jesus, in the moment of your encounter with Jesus, in the moment of your storm, you discovered who Jesus was. Yeah, you had to go through that, but guess what? Jesus was with you. I am with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you when you cry. I'll catch every tear. I am moved by uh, with my, my compassion. I am merciful to you when I see you pitifully trying to do what you can't do by yourself. And they missed the answer and nobody said anything except one. And you know, he was kind of brash and they didn't know what he might say and he blurted out, I like the Christ. Oh, son of the living God. He thought he'd done something there, you know. You know, there's some people who like to, they like to revel in the fact that they were, what comes up comes out. I've learned not to hang out with those kind of people because I don't want what comes up to come out when we sit at the restaurant and the waiter hadn't brought our food out. Oh, y'all don't go out to eat, yeah, no, that's right, y'all still, y'all still in, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want, I don't want what comes up to come out when I'm trying to get on the next flight and the gate agent, you know, is stressed and frazzled and you come talking about, don't you know who, no, 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 I want somebody who's going to be nice and smile and pull that mask down and just be so, so nice and I thank you so much. Yeah, 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 see, Peter had a reputation, Peter, Peter had, had that reputation, he'd cut, he'd cut you in a minute. And yet he gives the answer that the others, number one, were too afraid to give. They didn't want to let it be known that they didn't know. And Peter really doesn't know, but he blurts it out. I'm not sure how, but Jesus gives us the clue. Jesus says to him, now, you didn't know that of yourself. And there are some things about the Lord. I'm glad I don't know in and of myself. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit, whoo, and that's what makes the Holy Spirit real in my life because the Holy Spirit will give you some things that you could not buy, ask for, didn't know to have, but you look up and there you have it. The Holy Spirit will place in you what you could not have obtained anywhere else and let it come out with power and everybody's wondering, how do you know the answer? I don't know the answer, but I know the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, see, see, in, in, in Korea, the, the, the church at Corinth was arguing over who was the bigger Christian, who was the super Christian. And they said, well, if you can do this, works of miracles, that makes you a big Christian. If you can do this, works of mission, that'll make you a big Christian. If you can do that and speak in tongues and have high worship, then that makes you uh, a super Christian. And Paul has to remind them that you only have to exhibit love, and the only way you get love is to connect with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, yeah, yeah, you didn't know the answer, but the Holy Spirit in you gave the answer. And hanging out with Jesus all this time ought to result in some kind of business in your life. I wonder, I get frustrated sometimes when I see the slow return of believers to the house of worship on whatever day is appointed. And then I get more frustrated and discouraged because I don't hear, well, the doctor said that my health condition won't allow it. No, I hear, well, Pastor, you know, yeah. But I, I, I get so uh, in a bit, the pillow feels so good at just the time I need to get up and you know I don't know when I'm coming back listen hasn't been coming all these years before meant anything to you has it ever done anything for you why were you coming and guess what the Lord has the record straight because we understand now that those we thought were with us really had to, they didn't know who Jesus is, and so we got some work to do. But every now and then, there's a remnant that understands who Jesus is. There's a remnant that understands when I gather in his holy place, it ain't the time for foolishness. It's the time when I get to encounter who Jesus is. And when I can answer by the power of the Spirit who Jesus is, then I can get my assignment.
And, and if Jesus gives me my assignment and because of who Jesus is, that no matter what happens in front of me, no matter what happens tomorrow, the assignment is still going to be carried out. And the good news is he's going to carry the assignment out through us. He wants to carry the assignment out through us. For 225 years, Gilfield Congregation, by one name or another, has stood as a light for those who are seeking spiritual uh, uh, illumination and salvation. We have stood, even at this very location, since February of 1818, in order to declare that there is a witness, that there is a God who saves, who loves God's people, and no matter the condition of your servitude in, among humanity, you are somebody in God. And all he says, and on this rock I'll build my church. What is it? On the word of God. And I am the revelation. I am the beginning. I am the alpha and the omega. Jesus declares here, on this rock I will build my church. On this word, Petros. He doesn't just call him Peter. He calls him Petros. Uh, he doesn't call him Simon. He calls him Peter. On that word that you said, I am the son of of the living God. I am the Christ. I am the Savior. I am the Redeemer. I am light in darkness. I am joy in sadness. I am strength in weakness and I will build my church. And I'm not just going to build a church that will stand until pandemic comes. I'm not just going to build a church that will only survive if the economy survives. He says that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now that does not mean that Hellions won't try to rise up. It just means that they won't win. It does not mean that it's not going to get difficult sometimes. It just means that the difficulty will not deter me. It does not mean that there won't be teardrops of sadness and sorrow that fill my eye, but they won't be the last word. He says, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against his soul. As we look to 225 years, we can declare with those who now rest from their labors that God was faithful. We can now declare with those who now rest from their labors. I don't know how God's going to do it, but God's going to send somebody and they're going to keep the gospel thing going on. God's going to send somebody and somebody will know in 2022 that the Lord is at work. Somebody's going to know in 2022 23, that God is at work. Somebody will know that God is moving in the 21st century. I'll build my church. I'm glad Jesus said, I'll build my church. I'm glad Caesarea Philippi did not declare they were going to build a church. I'm glad the emperor said, didn't say he was going to build a church. I'm glad the governor didn't say he's going to build a church. I'm glad the mayor didn't say she's going to build a church. But Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And that means we don't have to worry about how this thing is going to turn out. It's going to turn out just fine. All right. Hallelujah. It's going to be all right because he's already positioned us to win. Anybody here like to know that we win in the end, which means we're winning right now? Oh, you've got some setbacks, but don't let your setbacks uh, confuse you. You're going to win. Just keep on pushing forward because Jesus is counting on you. Jesus has already laid the path, made the pattern, and all you have to do is report for duty in the play and report for duty by declaring he is my captain. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. I take my orders from the great I am through his word. Word, I know what to do. I am all right. I am in good shape. I am going to be a winner. I am victorious. They may laugh at me for believing the way I believe, but I'm going to keep on believing because it has worked. It will work. It will always work. He will build his church, and he's building it on the lives of those who believe. He's building it on the lives of those who are open to the move of the Holy Spirit. Just have their way in them. Stop trying to figure everything out and just say, Lord, have your way in my life. I don't know everything, but what I don't know, your Holy Spirit will teach me. I don't have all power. In fact, I don't have any power at all, but for what you want me to do, give me strength. Give me power. I don't know anybody. I might have to go by myself, but the Lord will send some strangers, and the strangers will bail you out. The strangers will encourage you, and you can declare the goodness of the Lord. You know, the church is open. There may be somebody here who, by the Holy Spirit's leading, led you to this particular broadcast, this particular place of worship. 
And as you're making up your mind, preparing to step forward, type in the chat, I want those of us who've already made that commitment to be prayerful, that the people that we know in the circles that we run in, who have erroneous ideas about who Jesus is, that the Lord will give us an opportunity to connect with them and have that conversation of clarification. No, he's not dead. He's alive. And the reason I know he's alive is because I know the encounter that I have with him even right now. No, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. See, don't, don't. In order to have audience with the president, you got to go through a background check. And baby, if your background check don't check out, they won't let you in to have audience with the president. You don't have a relationship with Jesus because your background check checks out. You have it because it's as spotty as it is. And he knows it. But he has a relationship with you in spite of it. And that's why you know he's real. And that's all you need to tell somebody else who says, oh, if Jesus is dead, that's a good notion. Mm -mm. No, more than a notion. He's, he's real. Yeah, yeah, but you, you remember that time you got sick? Mm-hmm. Doctors didn't know what to do, no. Nope. But he just told me to trust him. Still making it, still trying to figure things out, but I'm trusting him. But you, you remember that loved one you've been praying for? We've been praying for, and it seems like the harder we pray, the worse they get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're still here for me to pray for. <laughs> yeah, I said, Lord, just put your hand of protection on them. And whatever alley they woke up in this morning, God's hand of protection was in that. Yeah, he, he, he's real. Yeah, yeah, but you remember you remember that economic downturn that hit your life and you had to get rid of the car, you had to downsize the house. They laughed at you and they, I, I, I know, but you know what, I'm here to, I can hear them laughing and I haven't missed a meal. We, we can't go over to the five-star French restaurant, but, but I got something to eat. He's with us in spite of, that's what you gotta tell for. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the Jesus who will meet you in the guttermost of your experience, then I wanna invite you to come down to the front and I want to pray that you will encounter him for yourself it ain't got nothing to do with the amount of people who pack in a worship space because his popularity because he remember the people said he was somebody who was no longer with us and only one out of twelve guessed that he, he is the Christ, the son of the living God. So all of us fall in a bad place on the curve, but he's got a promise. You finish reading 16 when you get home. He says, now, if you take the mantle and who I am seriously, I'm gonna build the church and I'm going to give you the key. I, I'm a key person. You don't give me no keys, and I'm patent. Because keys represent power. Because keys unlock what other folk can't get. Keys lock so that other folk can't get and steal. And Jesus says, I'm going to build a church on a solid foundation and I'm going to give you the key. 
Mm. And whatever you lock up on earth gonna be locked up in heaven. <laughs> you got a passcode that if somebody tries to hack into your device in your car, an alert will come to your phone. And whatsoever is bound in heaven is gonna be bound. And that what he says, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Problem is we just don't see it because we got stuff clouding our view, our spiritual view. But I want to ask the Lord to open up our eyes so that you see the opportunity and the reality of who God is so that the next time you hear somebody spouting off and that ain't who Jesus is, you can just declare, I know who he is. I've seen him. I've experienced him. Will you come today, my sister, my brother, as we're standing in the building? Type in the chat if you want to give your life to Jesus for the very first time. Just type in, open my eyes, Lord. We'll pray with you. We'll connect with you as best we can to get you to this place where you can declare you are a follower of Jesus, a member of his body. about how you can connect with this God who opens our eyes and gives us the right answer so we can possess the keys to all that his kingdom is about, then call us at 804-895-0213. Until next time, go in peace.